Mr. Ryan Gosling. A.K.A. Ken. A- A.K.A. Ken. At the Oscars. Stole the show. Stole the whole show. Welcome to Get to the Hook. And boy, do we have a big show this week. Courtesy of one Mr. Ryan Gosling. Because, A.K.A. Ken. A- A.K.A. Ken. Because, uh, you know, at the Oscars uh, on Sunday night, it was an incredible performance, which made us think about what we're going to talk to you about uh, on this episode of Get to the Hook, um, which we should remind people, this is a music podcast. We're talking some fun trivia. We're talking some facts that you either didn't know or forgot about uh, your favorite music artists. And uh, this week, Ryan Gosling gives us our our topic, which is... Actors who sing, singers who act. Exactly. Um, Because there's been a lot of crossover. Uh, Apparently, it's like... Everybody wants to do what they're not doing. <laughs> and they say, of, hey, that looks cool. I want to try Some that. are good at it. Some not so much. Uh, Ryan Gosling was great at it. This was him like at the Oscars. Stole the show. Stole the whole show. And he reminded people, listen, he had musical talent. I mean, albeit it was on the Mickey Mouse Club, but it's still musical <laughs> talent, damn it. But that, think the Mickey Mouse Club, that era that he was on, that 90s Mickey Mouse Club, you had Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, Christina Aguilera, him, like, a lot of talent out of those kids. Yeah, and this performance at the Oscars definitely remind, I, reminded us that people have slept on Ryan Gosling. They did it. La La Land, we saw it, and now we saw, saw it again in this performance last night. I'm just kidding. Where I see love, she sees a friend. I mean, I felt like he was acting a little bit, but yeah. whatever, that's, that's fine. And I actually, right. we're gonna, as we're going to see, I think there are a lot of times when actors are doing music that it feels like they're acting. It's just sometimes it, they pull it off better. Their than character they're... is a singer. Right. That's the character they're doing. So I would say there's a couple things we are really not going to focus on. First of all, musicals. Ground rules. Ground yeah, rules. Ground right rules now. here. Musicals, right. no. No Judy Garland, Gene Kelly, Julie Andrews, Idina Menzel, and Kristen Chenoweth. No. That's, they're lovely. No, yeah. We're not covering it. That's not what we're talking about. This is not singing actors in that kind of sense. This right. is singers who tried their hand at acting, actors who tried their hand at singing. Uh, some of the singers we're not going to be talking about I'm not really going to count it if if a singer made a movie but basically played themselves or some version of it. Which so for us means we got to leave out Prince, which is <sighs> breaks my heart for both of us. But yeah, Purple Rain's not really that. Eminem's Eight Mile, he basically played himself. Right. All of Elvis's movies, a- every single some one sort of, them. of singer in one of those. <laughs> uh, Britney Spears, Crossroads, and mm. honestly, and I, I might get some flack on this. I think Beyonce and Whitney Houston, same thing. They were more dramatic in their films, but like Beyonce and Cadillac Beyonce, Records definitely. and Dreamgirls played a singer. Yes. Uh, Whitney, Bodyguard, was basically her. She did more with Waiting to Exhale and right. The Preacher's Wife, but still, music was such a part of those movies and those exactly. soundtracks. Not going to really get into Whitney on this one. Um, some, other, some other genres and, and types of things we're talking about. Also, uh, a lot of actors who do have music careers, but they're not really known for them. Like, we all know Kevin Bacon plays music with his brother. Yes. Keanu Reeves has his band Dog Star. Kate Hudson has an album coming out. Jeremy Renner sings. But they're mostly known as actors. Nobody's really checking for that. It's sort of like if you notice they're playing in your area, maybe you'll go check it out. But you're not really It's the novelty of, hey, that Hawkeye's got an album out. And it's not that he's not (laughs) talented. Just we're looking at people who crossed over in a bigger way. Uh, One more more not that we're doing. Um, And this one hurts a little bit. Soap stars. Soaps, I, there's a lot to get into there, but it's crazy how many soap stars had hit songs. Yeah. Going back to the 1950s, the, the Ballad of Davy Crockett by Bill Hayes. Oh, yeah. Number one hit. Yeah. Bill Hayes was Doug Williams on Days of Our Lives for decades. <laughs> Shout out to Doug on Days of Our Lives, my grandmother watching it every afternoon. Um, also, uh, a curious one, Rick Springfield. I have an issue. I, 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 he started I, as a singer. I know, and I have an issue with this that we're not doing Rick Springfield. Well, because... So he, he was, you know, he had a hit called Speak to the Sky in the early 70s. Career cooled off, went to General Hospital, became a huge star, then went back into music, Jesse's Girl took off, and then he was just a singer. Like, and he's just a singer. It's more of a fun blip that he was on a soap. Uh, also, Michael Damien. He's primarily a singer, not really. Right. Michael right. Damien from uh, Young and the Restless had a number one hit with Rock On. Jack Wagner, Frisco Jones. All I Need. All I Need, number two. And one I want to mention really wait, wait, quickly. Well, hold on a second. That song was number two? Number two. That song was number that two? That song went to number two, I know. I mean, I remembered it, and I could sing some of it, but number two? Yeah. Another, one, another number two hit I want to give a special shout-out to, Gloria Loring. 
At the time, in the 80s, wife of Al, uh, Alan Thicke, mother mm-hmm. of Robin Thicke, she had a number two hit called Friends and Lovers with uh, Carl Anderson. Yeah. That's not the song I want to play you a little clip of because that's her biggest hit. It's her only hit. Sure. It is not her most famous song. It's a song she wrote with her husband. This was Gloria Loring's most famous song by far to me. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life. The facts of life. The facts of life theme song. I didn't know she wrote that. She co-wrote it with Alan. She Ooh. sang it. He sang the different strokes theme song. A lot of music in that family. Um, also, we're gonna I'm gonna quickly go over here. This is not a category we're gonna get too into. Teen stars, uh, specifically like your Disney, Nickelodeon kind of kids, because I think specifically they are hired to be these triple threat singer, actor, dancer, entertainment types. Right. Music and is a big the, part of these shows that they do. The TV show becomes a vehicle for the music and right. promotes the music, and then the music promotes the TV show. A list of the people who came from those Miley. shows, Miley Cyrus, Ariana Grande, Olivia Rodrigo, Selena Gomez, Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, Christina Aguilera. Going back to the early Mickey Mouse stuff in the 50s and 60s, Haley Mills from the original Parent Trap, um, right. Annette Funicello had a couple of hit songs, actually. Uh, Zendaya was a Disney kid, had a hit song, uh, High School Musical Kids. Some other kids who weren't Disney, who were just teen stars uh, that had hits. Patty Duke from the Patty Duke Show had a top mm-hmm. 10 hit. Uh, I want to talk about Shelley Fabre for a second. You remember her? I remember Shelley Fabre. She was on Coach with Craig T. Nelson sure. in the 80s and 90s. Shelley Fabre did not have a. She had a hit song, and this is a funny story. So, Shelley Fabre in the late 50s and early 60s was a teen actress on the Donna Reed Show. And that is, wow. even if you are unfamiliar with that show, when you think of 50s housewives, that idea of, you know, vacuuming in pearls sure. and cooking dinner, it was because of the Donna Reed show. She right. literally vacuumed in pearls. So Shelly would have been a kid on that show. She was her daughter. Okay. And so that show was a Columbia show. They also had a record label. So the producers were like, hey, kids like Elvis and teen singers. Let's make these kids sing. Shelly Fabre is like, I am not a singer. I do not want to do this. <laughs> she, she protested it. Shut up, kid. Yeah. Basically, they said, shut up and go in there and sing. So she goes in to cut this song. She said she was terrified when she recorded it. And it went to number one. Number, okay. This, uh, 1962, this is Shelley Fabre's number one hit, Johnny always, Angel. Always shock me, Eric. Johnny Angel, how I love him. He's got something that I can't resist. I wish people my, listening to this could see your face. My, you have just blown my, I know that song. Of, of course, course you I do. Know it's a song. classic And I knew it was the number one song. I had no idea that's, that's the woman from Coach? Yep. yep. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, and she did not want to do it. And they made her do it, and it worked out all That's right. That's the way it always goes, right? Yeah, she released a couple other songs contractually, and then she was like, I'm not a singer. She did not pursue a music career, but she fluked into a number one song. Wow. Yeah, and uh, another one. Probably got a gold record on, on a wall somewhere. Probably, I'm sure she does. Wow. Uh, but this is something that's continued. It's not just a 60s thing. In the 90s, when Blossom was big in the early 90s, mm-hmm. Joey Lawrence was like the teen heartthrob. Joey Lawrence having it, yeah. 93, he had a hit called Nothing My Love Can't Fix. And I want to talk about another teen star that I don't think people think of as a teen star, John Travolta. So when you hmm. think of John Travolta and music, obviously Saturday Night Fever, Grease. Grease. He's all over the soundtrack. It's not shocking to say John Travolta had a number one hit because you expect that You're the One That I Want was a number, was one, a number hit. one hit. You think right. something from Greece went to number one. Summer Nights was a top ten hit. But before that, 1976, John Travolta is on Welcome Back, Cotter. He is Vinnie Barbarino. Right. He's a heartthrob to all the girls. He was the cool guy. He's, a, he's like a teen beat kind of, or tiger beat. Yeah, like tiger that kind of like yeah. pent-up kind of kid. Had a music career and actually got a song to number ten and... Oof, this song, it is not You're the One That I Want. I'll tell you that. This is John Travolta's <laughs> Letter In from 1976. Gonna let her in. Gonna let her in. Mm-hmm. You know what that reminds me of? That around <sighs> that same time, <laughs> snoozing, he had a, um, was it was an after school special or something called The Boy in the Bubble. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's singing Let Her In. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. so he he had a hit song. Is that is that but he, not appropriate? That, that was the, it was the boy in the angry? bubble was the name of the thing. Yeah, yeah, let her in uh, <laughs> or don't. Um, yeah, so he had his singing chops before right. Greece. Maybe it helped him get Greece and make yeah. better known songs. Well, that was the whole Robert Stigwood thing that they signed right. this big contract and it's like get out there. We're going to use you for music. We're going to use you for movies. And he could and do it all of out. It. And yeah. he he could dance. We all know that. Um, yeah, and it's interesting how some of those teen kids pursue one more than the other. Like, Hilary Duff was, you know, one of those teen kids and more pursued acting. Like, she had her hit right. songs, and, you know, to millennials, those are classic bangers. Uh, but she kind of gave up music a little bit yeah. and pursued acting more. Miley Cyrus hasn't really done a ton of acting 
since Hannah Montana. Yeah, she really hasn't. She's really focused more on her music. Her music. So they, they kind of pick and choose. Um, so let's look at, at, at some of the actors who have actually had success right. in music. And some of them have sort of danced back and forth, uh, if you will, between music and acting, but they've been successful in both. Right. And I think what's so much so that it makes it hard to go like, well, is some of these people you go like, are they actors first or are they singers <laughs> first? You really it's hard I, to yeah, tell. I think a lot of these we're looking at are gonna you're gonna think of them as actors probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna go back to uh, the '70s for a second. I, I like to cover all the eras here because it okay. shows this. That's the thing too is, I, when I was thinking about this, it literally goes back to the beginning of sound in movies. What was the very first talkie? It's a yeah. Uh, Chaplin movie, right? What? No, no, no. It's the jazz singer. Oh, yeah. 1927, right. Al Jolson, which it's so funny now. If you even know that name, you know he's the guy that did blackface. Uh-huh. And we don't want to yeah, talk about yeah. that. Yeah, Al Jolson gets problematic. But, but a century ago, the 19 teens and 20s, Al Jolson was a pop star. He had a lot of hit records. So when they made the very first movie with sound, like, hey, let's get this pop star to come in here and sing some songs. You and know, I was Mammy. I was, <laughs> ooh, ooh. I was very upset because I, as a teen, saw jazz singer the Neil Diamond. Yeah. movie and but I same was like, thing pop singer and i was kind of like all right this is cool i could sing along some of these songs and then when i got old enough and discovered that that there was an a jazz singer before that one <laughs> and who was in that jazz singer what he was singing i was like neil diamond i mean to be fair to neil diamond he did not sing mammy and he didn't do it in blackface and he didn't do it in blackface <laughs> God. just you know but it is funny like from the the very first time that there was sound in movies they were like let's get a singer in here yeah and this has continued on. So this is right now we're going to look at some of the oh. actors who had some actual hit songs. And some of these might surprise you. Some you definitely know. So going to the 70s, Starsky and Hutch. Remember yeah. that show? Oh, yeah. It was a big TV show in the 70s, cop show. David Soule was Hutch on the show. Mm-hmm. And he had been a singer before he got into acting. Done some Broadway stuff and like musical theater things. Wound up on this hit TV show and used it to score a number one song of his own. Uh, from 77, this is Don't Give Up On Us. Don't give up on us, baby. Uh, so yeah, he has a number one song. Sa- sa- sappy, but all right. I yeah, get it. and he just sappy died recently. R.I.P. David Soul. R.I.P. Uh, in the '80s, there were a lot in the '80s. I don't in know why 80s, this was a craze. You know why? Because because music was so. We always talk about this that 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 mid '80s era was so huge for music, for pop music, and if you have a really popular actor, why not try it? Well, you and know. By the way, I think a lot of them were. Successful, and you know, now that I think about it, probably another reason for it is because of MTV. Suddenly, you have to have videos. Right. So, what if you can get people who already know how to be on camera? Mm-hmm. If they can carry a tune at all, <laughs> MTV was all <laughs> over it. So, uh, what SNL Saturday Night Live has been a, a surprising uh, wealth of these kind of things. The Blues Brothers in the seventies, sure. Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi actually had a number one album. Uh, Steve Martin's King Tut. I know he was not a cast member, but he might as well have been in the Born in Arizona, moved to Babylonia. King Tut. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Fallon, even now, his song, Ew, was a top 40 hit. Uh, it, Adam oh, Sandler's Hanukkah that. song, the biggest song to come from SNL, shot to number two in 1985. Eddie Murphy. Dick in a box? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish that had charted. <laughs> Eddie Murphy, party all the time. I don't care what anybody says. This is a great song. But hold on. He was not on, that's not fair. He wasn't on SNL at that point, was he? He had just left. That song came out in 85. Okay. He was not far removed from SNL. I thought he had left SNL in like 83? No? 83, 84? Anyway. Anyway, he was hot off of SNL. I'm just saying, somebody who came from that, that you think of as a comedian, he had, you know, by that point, Beverly Hills Cop had blown up. He had movies that had blown up. 48 hours. Right. And And, and that's why. And he struck while the iron was hot. And so this was party all the time. Also, it's awesome because Rick James wrote and produced the thing. So I, I, I will say that of all the, you know, I've seen the list that we're going through. Yeah. To me, Eddie Murphy is the best hit of the hits. That oh, that song dropped. is a stone cold banger. Best. But I also <laughs> always feel like it's, there should be an asterisk because it's Rick James. Like It's Rick James. I mean, Eddie's singing, but Rick James is doing the backup. Rick James wrote the music. It's a it. Rick James song. He's in the video. He's, it's <laughs> it's right. very Rick James. Uh, some other guys in the mid-80s, tough guys that you might not think of as mm-hmm. being these sensitive balladeers. Don Johnson, star of Miami Vice. Right. 
the hottest show. He was the coolest guy on earth Crockett, for a while on, there. Sonny? And it was sort of a weird left turn in the middle of being, you know, cool, cooler than everybody. Crockett, he comes out with his song Heartbeat that goes number five. It's that's n- MTV. You're right. That is that's full MTV era yeah. right there. That's why that becomes a hit. Let's pick and the most the handsome guy so- we can. Right. Get him to sing a song. Who, by the way, parlayed that. Not only did he have success with that, he had another hit, right? Like a he a did. And it's. Do you remember who his duet partner was? It was a yes. Duet. I was going to say what he did is he parlayed his music success into oh, I can date Barbara Streisand now. He did. That, also, just that wrapping your head around Don Johnson and Barbara Streisand dating in the eighties, I. It's so bizarre, and they released a song, uh, Till I Loved You, and it hit the top 30, and he held his own against Barbara Streisand. So, legitimately, he could sing. Yeah. Like, he wasn't bad. Good for him. It makes you, now, I look at his daughter, Dakota Johnson, dating, engaged, married, whatever they are, with Chris Martin, makes a little more sense. Right. Like, music music is, like, she she grew up hearing this incredible voice in her house. (laughs) Yeah. I want to laugh at that, but he was not a bad singer, honestly. Yeah. Uh, a little bit better singer, I think, than our next guy, Bruce Willis. I think people forget you just, he had uh, a hit. You, you cut, who forgets that Bruce Willis hit it? Who forgets I, Bruce Willis had a hit? I think if you weren't around in the 80s, I you know have, Bruce Willis. I have like, the album or the CD. <laughs> I have it. Wait, the CD. Oh, hold on. Then you bought two it Two CDs. He had two albums that came out, and I have both of them. I don't think there was a hit on the second. No, you were a Bruce Willis fan. I didn't I, know that. Well, because I was a moonlighting. I'm yeah. a moonlighting. No, I love fan. Bruce Willis. And when he put out the song, I was all about it. I know the song you're about to play, but I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, let's play some of Bruce Willis' Respect Yourself. Oh, respect yourself. It's, it's an old swagger. staple singer song. It's a staple singer song from right. the 70s. I think a lot of it's And he not, had the Pointer Sisters singing uh, backup vocals. And let's be fair. The Pointer Sisters did a lot of the heavy lifting on that song. They, they sang most of the chorus, the second verse. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> he just gave it, I know, they just said, you know what, um, Bruce, that's not, I, I, I guarantee there is somewhere that second verse of that song with Bruce singing it, and the producers are like, you know what, Bruce? Bring the volume down on that. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's let the Pointer Sisters take this. And Bruce Willis is not a bad singer, honestly. But I think sure. why that song works and why his whole album worked, it's just the swagger. He had rock star swagger. Yes. And it came across, and he was the coolest guy. And what are you going to do? T- think Bruce Willis is lame? No, he's right. Bruce Willis. How, how high did that go? Number five. That's, you got to respect that. <laughs> well, he respects himself, <laughs> so yeah. And this was uh, right before Die Hard came out. Right, so he wasn't even didn't wasn't even a a huge uh, movie star at that point, but Moonlighting was. I, I think, and he was singing on Moonlighting. Right, so I think it was sort of a, a one of those things with like the dominoes falling. Like he got really famous on Moonlighting, parlayed that into this hit song, and I think the raised profile from that he turned into Die Hard. Right, and then he's just Bruce Willis. Right, and, and, you know, always has been, always will be. You remember the the hit song that he sang on Moonlighting? <sighs> uh, was it Under the Boardwalk? No, no, he didn't. He did sing that one on yeah. on his album, but that I think was what he sang on the show. Moonlighting, he did his version of uh, "Good Lovin." Oh, oh yeah, I do remember. Yes, that, that yeah, was yeah. the Shakespeare episode, and yeah. he was saying, "Oh, wow, you're going into this," and you're like, "That's season four, episode uh, two? Uh It was actually season three. <laughs> oh, I didn't so. know you were that kind of a moonlighting fan. Yes. my apologies. <laughs> uh, some other actors, I think we got to acknowledge Jared Leto here. Okay. 30 Seconds to Mars has been I will say genuinely legitimately successful. Right. They I mean they've had a lot of albums. They yeah. tour. They're, and they're not they're not like huge right pop top 40 hits but like on rock radio they've had a bunch of hits. Uh their song The Kill Bury Me was a big song. And he still gets top 10 albums like whenever they do a record so and they, they can tour. Well. So I yeah. I'll, I'll admit I'm I'm going to recuse myself. I haven't <laughs> listened to a lot of 30 Seconds from Mars and to um, Mars. To, yeah, clearly yeah, you haven't listened to a go. lot. I don't even know the name. I've heard the name a lot. <laughs> I listen, I got 30 seconds and I got Mars. Yeah, it's you, an you, got the, you got the there. keywords there. Uh, some other quick ones I want to go through, more recent ones. Um, this one actually spun out of a movie, but it wasn't, I don't think it was meant to be the hit that it was, it was a top 10 hit. When Pitch Perfect came out, obviously it's a music movie. Anna Kendrick was a good enough singer to be in the movie, right. but she was not a pop star, was not aiming for that. And just people loved her singing the song Cups from that movie, uh, When You're Gone. And it went top 10 because it went viral. And this was that you know, the iTunes early streaming age where people could make a hit whether it was right. meant to be a hit Even or not. Even if it didn't play right. on the radio as much. And everybody remembers this song. This is Anna Kendrick's Cups. You're gonna miss me by my hair. You're gonna miss me everywhere. Oh, you're gonna miss me when I'm 
I think that's really fun for her that she wasn't yeah. aiming to have a hit and she just did. Yeah. But she hasn't since then never really followed up on it. Yeah, she's not following up on yeah. it. So it seems like for her, she was like, Oh, this is a novelty. It was cool that it did that well, right. but not something she was pursuing. Yeah, she didn't. And the same thing happened with Jennifer Lawrence uh, from The Hunger Games. Her song, The Hanging Tree. I saw you Tree. had Jennifer Lawrence on here. Yeah, you're like, like, I don't, I remember, don't remember Jennifer Her Lawrence song, The Hanging it. Tree from uh, The Hunger Games, it's, it's sad. It's not a good catchy pop song in that sense, but it a caught horrible on. Horrible title. It went top 20. Yeah, well, <laughs> The Hunger Games were not a fun series sure. of films. Uh, but same thing, like in the streaming era, people could be like, oh, I just want to go listen to that. A song can go viral. And they don't have to promote it. They don't have to mean for it to be a hit. It just can be. Hmm. Uh, also, somebody who actually did pursue it, Haley Steinfeld. Remember? I like the song. She had a couple hits. She got big, obviously, in True Grit when she was 13 years old. Right. And right after that, she became a pop star. Her first song was Love Myself was a big top 40 hit. It's not really, that, that genre is not really my jam, but I thought yeah. that was cool. I she had another song it. called Starving with Zed, the DJ. Yep. It was a top 20 hit. So she had a pretty good career, and then her music career kind of cooled off a little bit. She hasn't had a hit in a while. Goes back to acting, and she's got she has voiceovers in the the Spider Verse movies. She's in Marvel's Hawkeye show. Right. Yep. So it's nice for her where she can just switch back. And I forth. feel like she does both. Right. Yeah. And that's a nice lane to have. Uh, <laughs> two more I want to do. These are the most ridiculous ones. Famously maligned actors doing singing. One was an actual hit. The other one is not. But we have to play it. William Shatner. Doing his own uh, John. We have to acknowledge yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Of El- course we do. William Shatner singing Rocket Man. You've probably seen the memes. This is a little This bit is of a it. classic, but maybe not because it's classic. <laughs> Rocket Man. Burning out his fuse out here alone. This weird spoken word poetry. I, you know, I was reading because about this. Because he owns it. He owns it when he does it, and it feels... And William Shatner has recorded albums, actually, before and after that. Yeah. But I felt a little bad for him. I was looking up, like... Where, where, why, when, why did that happen? How did happen? this happen, right? It was at the Saturn Awards in 1978, which is kind of like the Oscars for sci-fi. Okay, I thought it's you were like going to the... talk about bad cars GM put out. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. no. Uh, so it was the 1978 Saturn Awards, apparently, and it wasn't televised because it's, you know, for sci-fi nerds. So William Shatner did this as sort of a joke, thinking no one's going to see this. And then... But they did film it, and it did get out, and now <laughs> everybody's seen it, and he hates it, and he's probably not going to be happy that we just played some of it, but... He kind of got, like you said, he committed to it. And that's what we're talking about. Like, right. sometimes actors who sing are playing a character. Exactly. Just like everyone felt like Ryan Gosling was doing at the Oscars, but he owned it, and that right. made it fun. Which is why as, as goofy and cheesy as William Shatner doing Rocket Man was, you kind of got to respect it. Because yeah. he's so committed to it. Right. Uh, one other one was not meant to be a joke, and this was actually a hit. It went to number two, and then a cover of it went to number one. Richard Harris who was King Arthur in Camelot. Yes. He was the first Dumbledore in the Harry Potter movies. Mm-hmm. He was in the first two, and then he died. Uh, long career, Oscar nominations, very respected actor. In 1968, got to number two with MacArthur Park. MacArthur's Park is melting in the dark All the sweet green icing flowing down If you had Such asked me, song. what do Richard Harris and Donna Summer have in common, I would not have picked that. Right, so that's uh, his version of MacArthur Park. The lyrics are kind of weird. It's about a cake melting in the ring in, in the park and old men playing Chinese checkers and right. whatever. He, cause, because he, he, that's why he, he shouldn't have committed so much because when you have this like Shakespearean actor like, the cake right. is melting, it sounds so ridiculous. Right. Uh, it was voted in the UK as the worst song of all time. Uh, Donna Summer did a disco cover of it in 78. And you forget about the lyrics when Donna Summer did it yeah, because the music is so going. And it's, it's just, just the passion right. and the voice and the music. And you would think if people already considered it the worst song ever, a disco cover's got to be the worst song. And yet. No, hers is a classic. It's it beloved. Worked. Disco it covered up a lot of bad stuff because just well, the beat is all you cared especially about. Especially when you're Donna Summer cocaine. too. It doesn't hurt when you got that voice. <laughs> yeah, the cocaine probably helped a lot too. Uh, don't look, so some singers who went into acting. There's some very respected ones. Uh, Cher, obviously, mm-hmm. with Moonstruck, right. Barbara Streisand, Bette Midler. Uh, some people who don't act very often, like Mary J. Blige, got an Oscar nomination for the movie Mudbound. Uh, she was on the first season that's of right. Umbrella yes, that's Academy. Right. Yep. Justin Timberlake. And I was thinking this, one of the things they do, because it's so easy, as we said at the beginning, if a singer does a movie like 8 Mile or Purple Rain or Glitter, Mariah Carey, it's right. just seen as sort of a vanity project sometimes. Sure. Even if you like it, you don't think they're great actors. A lot of these people are very careful to keep their music and their acting separate. Like when Justin Timberlake 
does, does movies. He doesn't do songs for them outside right. of the Trolls movies, which are cartoons. And that's a music m- right, right. driven movie. But anyway. when he acts, like when he did the social network, when he does uh Yeah. Palmer, when he does he specifically it probably says in his contract, I'm not gonna do any songs, I'm not gonna do a soundtrack for this. I'm a, right. I'm an actor. And he plays very much against type a lot of the time. Yeah. He wants to be seen as as an actor like that. Uh Tim McGraw with the blind side, Harry Styles doing uh the name of that movie I've already forgotten. Uh, the the one with the Don't worry, darling. Yeah. yeah Harry Styles it. did yeah. Don't Worry, Darling. <laughs> like him being a pop star had nothing to do with that movie right. and his performance. And he was also in um Although I will Nolan's say movie. he was a very attractive guy known from his pop star. It doesn't star. hurt. Right. And I think that's why he gets it. But he but, also but had he, to if he act. wanted to make right. a movie about the wildlife of a pop star, he could do that and it right. would be a hit. But he's never cashed Those in. His credit, that. true. Uh also you know, Lady Gaga now, she Used music with A Star Is Born, and then she did House of Gucci. I think she wants to be seen as a serious actress. Right. Clearly, winning an Oscar is something she wants very badly. Uh, Dolly Parton, even like yeah. Nine to Five. You think of that song, but in the movie, but in the movie, she's not playing a, a, a singer, singer at all. At all, right? Or like Steel Magnolias. She's, good with she's a shot. just an actress. Uh, a lot of rappers. Mm-hmm. I think the list of rappers: Will Smith, Queen Latifah, Ice Cube, Ice T, LL Cool J, Ludacris, Tupac, DMX, Bow Wow, Eve, Ti, Snoop, Method Man, Red Man, Common. So many rappers. It's easy to cross over. Well, because yeah. you want that audience, and you know that that audience will follow you to a movie that's right. just, yeah. That's and it's, it's a wide business. range of the kind of movies they do. I think it's funny, though. You can usually tell when a rapper's really serious about their acting because they use their real name. Like, if you Which, see Chris Bridges in a movie, as opposed right. to Ludacris, like, oh, he's serious. He's very serious. serious. When right. it became Will Smith and not The Fresh Prince. Mm-hmm. Oh, right, now he's serious right. about right, it. Right, right, yeah. Um, I, I have an issue with this category because i feel like there are some really great people who are great at music who got whether they were i don't want to say they were seduced by acting and then they kind of went away from music and i'm very sad about it the one that jumped out at me is queen latifah yeah queen latifah not and by the way queen latifah not just as a rapper and she's great as a rapper Queen latifah has chops can sing. She got an Oscar nomination for Chicago. And she got, yes. Because she was a great actress she and a great singer. She can actually sing. And I wished, just as I was learning that she has this great voice and she can sing, then she kind of veered off and went more into acting and she did a talk show for a little bit. But, and she's never really come back to the music yeah. in the way that she did before. And I just wish that we, I wish we lived in a world where I could hear <laughs> where Queen Latifah went with or she would have the music. Committed to both a bit more. I was th- like, sitcoms were a, a big thing. Uh, you know, when Will Smith did the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Queen Latifah had Living Single, which was sort of the beginning of the end of her rap career in right. some extent. Uh, Brandy had Moesha. Reba McIntyre had her own sitcom. Um, for a lot of them, yeah, they don't go back. And I was trying to think of people either way, actors who went into singing or singers who went into acting, where they kind of abandoned one career entirely. Mm-hmm. One of the most Famous examples, technically a rapper, Mark Wahlberg. I knew you were going to say, when you said technically a rapper, technically I knew rapper. where you were going with but it. But he yeah. comes out of the gate with a number one song with good vibrations, sure. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, and then he refused to let people call him Marky Mark. He still, I think, is not, not fully embraced it, ever. Right. He's very seriously taken as an actor at this point. He's had an Oscar nomination um, for The Departed. Yeah. But yeah, once he got into acting, and, and he worked very hard to be taken seriously as an actor, he never looked back at music at all, right. which I kind of wish he would because was isn't he a that, great ra- rapper? No, but Good Vibrations is a great song. Right, but isn't that his way of going, look, that's all I had, that's, that's all I had in the tank. That's it. Yeah, so but, if you're but, looking for me to do more, that's why I'm acting. But if you're going to have one, that's a good one to have. It is a good uh, one, yes. I think also no Mandy, Mandy Moore, remember she was a teen pop singer. Mm-hmm. She came out with the Britney Christina era. Her songs Candy and I Want to Be With You were hits. Then after A Walk to Remember and especially after This Is Us, she didn't release music at all for over a decade. And now she does albums sometimes when she feels like it. But, but everyone's thinking she's an actress. An actress right? And I, I was trying to think, does it go the other way? Is there somebody that started acting and then got so big in music they stopped acting? There's two I thought of. Who stopped acting? Okay. Alanis Morissette started on the Canadian kids show You Can't right. Do It on Television. Right. And then she became Alanis Morissette. Mm-hmm. And the other one. Lauren Hill. Oh, I wasn't even thinking Lauren. Yeah. No, well, yeah, she was an actress. She was an actress. No, right. big, another Canadian kids TV show. Degrassi. Oh! Drake. Who's that guy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> he's so big now. You for, it's, it's like a footnote joke that he was yeah. an actor at first. Yeah. But once he hit his lane, and, and it's weird to me that Drake hasn't made a movie. It is strange. Like, I, even it's just a vanity project me, ego stroke. Like, 
does he feel and, and look i didn't watch degrassi so i don't know how he was as an actor <laughs> but again is this him acknowledging listen i i know what i can do yeah but it's funny when he first started rapping people didn't take him seriously because they're like oh it's that kid from degrassi oh he wants to be a rapper right well he showed them indeed um who do you, so I was trying to think, who do you think are the people that have straddled the line the best where they can maintain both careers go back and forth if they want to and be huge i have been thinking about that i have a name and the reason i think this is the best one is because i struggle to remember how she started but it's jennifer lopez yeah she's i don't remember if she i she was an actor first she was a right? fly girl first she was, she was a, dancer. a fly girl right and then she was a dancer for janet jackson dance for as janet you jackson. lied about being one yeah day. i i didn't we'll tell that story in another episode. i didn't lie <laughs> i, I We'll get to it some Charles used to be but, a dancer for Janet. No, he didn't. Uh, um, you don't know. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so she, she did that. And then the thing that really made her a star was Selena, which right from the beginning was straddled that. She was in a movie about a singer. Right. So she kind of had music. So I think technically she's an actor first. At least. I think so too. At least too. publicly acknowledged as an actor Like if first. you say, if you ask most people, what does Jennifer Lopez do? Probably people would say act at this yes, point. Yes, right, right. But also her her singing career is hugely successful. And Lots I do, of number one hits. And now I do remember like when she when her first album came out. Ninety nine deal when, um, because this was someone we'd gotten to know as an actor who was now doing music from Selena from the classic uh, Anaconda. Yes, also with Ice exactly. Cube. Uh, yeah, and then if you had my love came out in ninety nine and shot to number one, and she didn't really look back. Also Will Smith. Yeah. Almost, I think you almost a lot. I think certain generations don't think of him as a rapper at all at this point. I mean, I there's one where I do remember very clearly him coming out as a rapper, and then the acting came. After. And he's actually significant in rap history, not because I don't think a lot of people ever took him seriously as a rapper. He was always sort of they family friendly, novelty, jokey. Yeah. But he won the very first rap Grammy in in the '80s, which is either yay or yeah. I mean, he beat yay. Public Enemy, so. Uh, <laughs> But right. still, he has a place in rap history. Sure. And then, and also to parlay DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, and there's like borderline novelty hits like Parents Just Don't Understand, into a TV show, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Mm -hmm. Then to use the show to get his music career bigger because Summertime became a hit because of that show. Right. Then he launches off into Bad Boys, into Independence Day, and he becomes the now biggest actor the big in the action. world. Yeah. Goes back to music, does Getting Jiggy with It, Men in Black from the movie, That's what he did right in the Miami, middle of that. Just the Two of Us. He went back and forth, and then I think his last hit was Switch in 2005, which is kind of a jam. Uh, and then solely into movies. And then the thing about the, the slap is you so remember him slapping Chris Rock, you forget he won Best Actor that night. Yeah. Like he's an Oscar winning, respected well, actor, one of the biggest box office successes. His in Oscar history. for Best Actor is completely overshadowed by his actions. That right. Night, so. He's a very talented actor and a yeah. very successful musician. He's gone back and forth. Also, one, it hit me this morning. And I think maybe it's sort of the Will Smith thing if they use different names. Because you think of the Fresh Prince as a rapper. Sure. Will Smith as an actor. Somebody else who has gone back and forth, Donald Glover. Because you, yeah. cause it's Childish because Gambino when he does music. Right. And people are like very excited for his next album. And he's teased it'll be his last. This Is America was a, a huge number one song. Also, and came from a sitcom with Community. Mm -hmm. Has done movies. He produces things. He's very successful. Because he's so multi-talented. He can kind of do both. Right. You can do both. And go, keep going back and forth. Um, I wanted to um, wanted to rank, at least for me, mm -hmm. and you can you can all right t do, take what you what you will <laughs> from this. <clears throat> but I wanted to rank the actors who had successful music, either just a hit or even right. you know a legit couple of careers. Albums. To me, I actually already said Eddie Murphy is my number one. Oh, uh, Party All the Time is one of the best jams ever. Right. Um, I won't argue with that. My bias here, Bruce Willis will be second. Okay. Um, I really love Haley Steinfeld's hit. So I'm okay. giving, I'm I'm giving her- I'm surprised that's so high. I'm giving her three. And the Anna Kendrick, again, not necessarily a song that I would, but it's catchy enough. It's catchy. I, I love it. I give her, she's top four. And then Don Johnson closes You're out. You're putting him at five. the bottom- He's top part well, well, hold on, but I have below him David Soul, John Travolta. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Jared Leto. Uh, well, but <laughs> and then Jennifer Lawrence, because so, I didn't even know she had. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of at the bottom. But wait, John Travolta, are we talking letter in? Because you're the one that I want, would probably be my number one. It would, but I know that that's, I don't I'm not that. counting his grease. Right. Not counting the grease. Because if you put grease stuff, then now he's got to move up to like number three. Oh, my top five. Well, of the list, <sighs> hmm. Yes, I, if, well, if we're not going to count, you're the one that I want. 
I think. Yeah, party all the time is my number one. You just can't. I, it's it's got to be. Um, hmm. I I don't know. I like Heartbeat. I hate that I do because it's so cheesy and such overproduced. Right. Eighties schlocky kind of stuff. But I'm a sucker for but, that. Sure. I think that's my two. It's our era. Yeah. Probably respect yourself. Haley Steinfeld. I like her song "Starving" a lot. I yeah. put that there, and then maybe Anna Kendrick. All right. And not Jennifer Lawrence. Apologies to David Soul, R.I.P. I, I don't love that song. And yet, I want to mention like quickly, this this still happens. This is not like some phenomenon from the past. Stranger Things, one of the biggest shows on, on TV, on streaming right now. Mm -hmm. Joe Keery, who plays Steve on that show. Do you watch Stranger Things? Uh, or, I watched the first two seasons. He's the kid with like the big, nice hair. Yeah. He, that's his thing. He has really good hair. Uh, he has a recording career under the name Joe, spelled D-J-O. So if you see it, you don't automatically know it's Joe right. Keery. Uh, his song, In the Beginning, is flying up the top 40 right now. And it's catchy. Here's a little bit of that song. Uh, real quick, I had a trivia question for you tied into all this. Ooh, all right. And there's, there's one specific name, if you think. There's one person I have deliberately avoided mentioning this whole conversation because it's one of the answers to this question. So there are seven people. I and I'm going to gi give you two of them right I away. I'm going to come up with seven. No, there's two right, you will on, not get. A, uh, get there's two you won't get, so I'm going right. to give you those right away. <clears throat> there are seven people who have won an Oscar for acting, either lead or supporting, and also had a number one song. Okay. So a number one hit and an Academy Award for acting, not like winning best song, like Bruce Springsteen won an Oscar for best song. I'm not counting that. These right. are people it's who won be acting, acting Oscars acting and Oscar. had a number one hit. So the two I'm going to give you really quickly. One little... But what if I... Hold on, don't give me... Because what if it's the ones I'm going to get? You're definitely not going to get one of these. All sure. right. I'm going to... Uh, Bing Crosby, because his number one hits predate the Hot 100 in 1958. Right. So in the 40s, he had a bunch of number one hits. And he won Best Actor for Going My Way in 1944. I was totally going to say Bing Crosby. Right. And the other one that nobody would ever get, uh, Shirley Jones. Remember her? Yes, I remember Shirley Jones. She was the mom on the Partridge Family. On the family, Partridge Family. And she was the real-life stepmother of David Cassidy. Right. So when the Partridge Family song, I think I Love You, hit number one, she was a member of the group. She, got... she technically counts for that. And she won a Best Supporting Actress Oscar in 1960 for the movie Elmer Gantry. I don't think you were going to get nope. that one. Nope, nope. So I wasn't going to get Shirley. The other five so I now, think you can get. We've mentioned a couple of them, actually. All right. Barbara Streisand yep. is the easy one. That's the easy one. Um, acting... Oscar. We just recently mentioned one of them. And specifically that they won an Oscar. <laughs> By the way, we should tell people that uh, Derek is sitting in the room here and who loves everything about trivia, so wants to yell out answers right He's now. He's trying to give you clues because he cannot stand it. Okay. Uh, one in, uh, Will Smith won. Will Smith right, won right, and right. had a number one hit. Had a couple right. number one hits, yeah. Um, wow. Um, what's your what's your hint? What's your hint? <laughs> Derek, stop giving him hints. I need to bring things I can throw at him. Um, oh gosh, All right, give me a hint. Okay, like, uh, the oldest one that you haven't gotten yet. Uh, one is Oscar in the early fifties. He had number one hits in the forties, the fifties, up into the sixties. One of the most iconic singers of all time. Won a Best Supporting Actor Oscar for a movie that also won Best Picture. I hate trivia. <laughs> give give me the Harvey hint, the one that Harvey would remember. Uh, oh, oh, all right. Um, the Harvey hint is that Harvey covered one of his songs. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> all right, Sinatra. Frank Sinatra right. won for uh, From Here to Eternity. Uh, wait, so how many that we got that? there? All right, so we're now up to we got three, four, five. We got two Sinatra. more. These two are easy. One we did we did mention this person earlier. One is best actress. One is best actor. The actress we've mentioned. The actor I specifically, if anybody's listening to this, like, how are you guys not mentioning him? I did not want to because I did not want to put it in your head. Well, as you know, something going in my head doesn't really <laughs> matter because it goes in and then it's out pretty quickly. Right. So we've mentioned, we've mentioned the best actress. Yeah. And she had a number one hit. She had a, several number one hits over the span of almost 30 years. Ma no, Madonna hasn't won. Nope. Lady Gaga didn't win an acting Oscar. Nope. Uh, it hasn't been 30 years. Da, 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 da. She, had a, she had a number one in the 60s as a duet, a couple in the 70s, and then one at the end of the 90s. Listen, everyone, stop throwing stuff at your radio, all right, or your phone or whatever device it is that you're listening <laughs> Everybody on. Stop knows this. throwing stuff. I don't know it. <laughs> <sighs> oh, gosh, Cher. Cher won for Moonstruck in 1987. That I sh all right. right. That's okay, the, one the last myself. one. I should have gotten Cher. 
The and last one, he, he won Best Actor uh, in the 2000s. He had two number one hits. He was a featured artist on both of those songs. He was not the lead, but he has had hit songs as a lead singer. He is, he's been on television. He's been in movies. He's done comedy. He's done drama. He can sing. He can act. He may be the most talented person in existence. Jamie Foxx. Mr. Jamie Foxx. Yeah, born for Ray. One. Hit number one with Twista's <laughs> Slow Jams and Kanye's Gold Digger, where he did his Ray Charles impression. Right, indeed. So those are your seven. <sighs> All right, so I really got one of, <laughs> of the <this. laughs> Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I suck at trivia, but <laughs> well, uh, but I love week. talking music, and uh, that's going to do it for this episode. We will see you next week when we are getting back to the hook. <laughs> <laughs>